Before we start the video quick, I want to give a heads up and say the uncut version of this documentary, The Game vs. Jay-Z, is available right now, ad-free, uncut, raw on patreon.com forward slash diverse mentality for just three dollars a month you can watch all my documentaries uncut also support us on the diverse mentality podcast daily hip-hop news debates and even artists interviews check the link in the description below for that and leave a like on this video it really goes a long way thank you so much and enjoy the video it, do you have a problem with jay-z <laughs> uh it would seem so you 38 and you still rapping uh. I used to think rapping at 38 was ill. Well, last year alone I grossed 38 mil. Jay-Z. You old ass. Oh, you hurt my feelings. Oh my <laughs> exactly. God. Tell Groupie. Tell Groupie to get over it. What up guys, your boy Quake, and I'm back with a brand new episode of What Really Happened, the series where I talk about beefs slash disagreements that really were one-sided or that didn't really escalate into making diss tracks. On this one, it was really, really one-sided as one person went at the other a lot more and the other just played subliminal disses. As you can tell by the video title, I'm going to be talking about the game versus Jay-Z what really happened and the crazy thing about this one is that both sides misinterpreted what the other person said and that's why they started having issues as you guys know with this series i talk about both sides of the story on how it started and then i talk about the major points in the battle with that being said grab a drink grab some popcorn sit back relax and let's get into it so it's really hard to tell what exactly started the issues between the game and jay-z the game has said multiple times that he looks up to jay-z and that jay-z is one of his favorite artists he even studied a lot of his albums before he started rapping himself so this whole battle is a lot of the game dissing and the game showing love on both ends. So think of it as Machine Gun Kelly's rap devil diss towards Eminem, where he disses him, but also shows love to him in the same track, except Game does this on multiple tracks. So let's get into what the game says started the issues between him and Jay-Z. Before we continue, I want to give a shout out to YouGov for sponsoring today's video. YouGov is basically an online survey to earn gift cards and cash rewards. They have polls, a bunch of surveys about various things from politics, pop culture, product, and brands. The reason why I use YouGov is very simple because you get money just for stating your opinion on things, various products, what's going on in the world, and companies love to know what you think about things that they do. And it's very easy to make the extra money. With that extra money, you can use it for various things. We all know right now gas prices are insanely high, so this would definitely help with that. There are a lot of new topics every single day that you can voice your opinion on such as Joe Biden's approval rating, what kind of beers you prefer, what kind of brands of company that you trust the most, stuff like that. One of the most interesting lists on this website is the most popular contemporary music artists. And a lot of people vote on who they like the most, and it was just very interesting going over the list and seeing what people preferred and the music. So check out YouGov, click the link in my description below. If you want your voice to be heard and you want companies to get honest feedback, click the link in my description below, voice your opinion and earn money. That's it for this, let's continue the video. The game stopped by Big Boy to do an interview back in 2011 and Big Boy had asked him, what are the issues between him and Jay-Z? The game then revealed what Jay-Z said to him at a 4040 club back in 2004 that he didn't like. The game says he went up to Jay-Z and asked, how do you stay relevant as an artist? The game didn't like Jay-Z's response. And what Jay-Z said is that most of you new rappers don't last long anyway. Find a new lane. The game took that as disrespectful and that's when he officially started having issues with Jay-Z. Ask me this, man. It, do you have a problem with Jay-Z? <laughs> uh, it would seem so. And what's that problem? Or where did that problem come from? I met I met Jay-Z a long time ago, man, in, um, in the 4040 Club. He seemed like a cool dude, you know what I'm saying? And um, I asked him something about, um, like, you know, um, how do you stay relevant, you know what I'm saying? And, and um, 
I didn't really like his answer. So ever since then, I kind of was just, you know, take shots here and shots there. Right. You know what do, I'm you, do you feel like, <clears throat> excuse me, he tried to like front you off or something? A little bit, slightly. Really? So I took that away. And you know, as the as Can a, you tell us what he said? Definitely not. Right. It's going to stir up some, you know, it's going to be crazy. But you know he saying? said something so bad yeah. that it put that distaste in your mouth. Yeah. Yeah. Damn. Man. And, it, and, and it, it was just crazy, man. Yeah, I'll tell you off air. Anybody else who want to know, just follow me on Twitter and ask me. Right. <laughs> right. You don't want to say it right now? Nah. Definitely. Can you write it down and I'll say it? Yeah, I will. <laughs> <laughs> and this is when you were like young and wide eyed and yeah. like when I caught you in New York that day. Yeah, yeah. Boom. We got it. All right. So this, so you went up to Jay Z. He's hey, handing yo, it to you, me now. Hey, yo, yep. You keep that too. That's I will. Class. That's classic. So you went up to Jay Z and you asked pretty much, how do you stay relevant? Yeah. All right. And he said, most of you new rappers won't last long anyway. Maybe you should think about, think of another lane. Yeah. That Jay-Z comment to the game seemed like it was mainly advice to the game that, hey, you should have your eggs in multiple baskets just in case your rap career doesn't go the way it's planned. Save your money, invest, so on and so forth. But the game being young didn't take it that way. He took it as disrespectful. So now let's talk about Jay-Z's side of things and what he feels like started the issues between him and game. Now I want to clarify, Jay-Z has not himself said this. In any interview where he talks about the game, he never discussed what the issues between him and game were or how they started. This is just solely based on my research. And based on my research, it would seem like Jay-Z would start having issues with the game on the track West Side Story, the first single off his album, The Documentary. This single was released on September 7th, 2004. On this track, the game spit a bar saying, I don't do button up shirts or drive Maybachs. And a lot of people perceive this as a diss towards Jay-Z, but the game clarified that it wasn't. But at that point, it was too late and Jay-Z took it as a diss. Payback, homie, I'm bringing CA back and I don't do button up shirts or drive Maybachs. And what made things worse was the game a couple weeks later released his second mixtape, West Side Story, The Compton Chronicles. And on this mixtape was that West Side Story track, as well as a song called Get Your Money Right featuring Dr. Dre and Jay-Z. This track was never approved by Jay-Z. His verse was never supposed to be on there, but it was released anyway without Jay-Z's approval. So of course, from Jay-Z's side, it looked very crazy. You got a song that's taking subliminal shots at him, at least that's how he perceived it. And then you have a song on the mixtape that has a verse from him that wasn't approved. We also must remember around 2004, the game was having issues with one of Jay-Z's artists, Memphis Bleak, and they were going back and forth, so that definitely didn't help the situation. After West Side Story was released, eventually word got to game that Jay-Z took that bar as disrespect towards him. So the game decided to do an interview with Ed Lover and clarified that that line was not going at Jay-Z, that that line was directed at Ja Rule. And that makes sense because the game revealed to Complex Magazine when they interviewed him about the making of the documentary that West Side Story was actually written in 2002, and in 2002, 50 Cent and Ja Rule were going back and forth at it, and of course, the game was on 50's side in Aftermath, and eventually ended up joining G-Unit. So a couple months went by, and the game officially dropped his debut album, The Documentary, on January 18th, 2005. On this album, on the title track, he addresses the West Side Story situation with Jay-Z. And towards the end of the track, he even adds the Ed Lover interview that he did where he addressed that the West Side Story track was a shot at Ja Rule, not Jay-Z. Got a hook for faith, no verse from Jay. I guess on West Side Story, he thought I spit in his face. So Ed Lover and Moni Love, I was talking to Ja with that Maybach line. In the interview with Complex where he discusses the making of the documentary track, he says, I remember speaking on certain situations with Ed Lover, so I got the interviews and you know we went in. I just had to ask Ed Lover, can I use that? And he sent it to me. I explained that the Maybach line wasn't about Jay-Z before that. I like when shit is set in stone. So people will be like, oh, that's what it was about. If I'm talking about somebody, I don't really got to do it subliminally. I like it to be known. I'll just say your name. I don't give a f 
but in that instance, I meant no harm to Jay-Z in the early stages of my career, and I was talking about Ja Rule. Everybody knew we had beef. With the game clarifying that those lines on the West Side Story track weren't going at Jay-Z, but they were instead going at Ja Rule, people would assume that the issues between the game and Jay-Z had settled down and that there was nothing going on. That ultimately ended up not being the case, because on February 7th, 2005, Jay-Z and his Rockefeller crew, alongside Memphis Bleak, appeared on Hot 97 to spit a freestyle. And on Jay-Z's freestyle, it was clear he was sending subliminal shots at the game. Before he started his freestyle, he even said, you need to give me 700% of your record if you're going to use my verse for your project. And what he's referring to was what I mentioned earlier of the game using an unreleased J-verse on his West Side Story mixtape, which was the track Get Your Money Right. Jay-Z then went in on his freestyle and mentioned the word game quite a few times. I want to go on a little bit, man. Yo, I, I swear, if y'all put my, 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 my verse on y'all records and all that, I want 700%. You plan to bang, I'm playing to bang too. You playing the games, I'm seeing the thing through. You saying my name to entertain your crew. I ain't playing no games, with shots exchange through. Fresh off probation, I gotta charge the door away. My lawyer say for 80 larger to go away. And I ain't no money to J, so you could get it broad day on Broadway while TRL taping. You playing the game, you know you ain't gonna win. Quit playing them childish games with grown men. I don't give a fuck about cars or chrome rims. I got apartments you can put your home in. Can I live? <laughs> can I keep it going? I wrote. Can I keep going? Do not put my verse on your records, dog. <laughs> <laughs> like the cats make subliminal wrecks No, they can't wreck the wreck with me I don't respect it You don't really want it with hold for the record I put a couple careers on hold You could be next, kid You keep entering the danger zone You gonna make that boy hold Put your name on a song If you that hungry for fame Sucker, come on Yeah, I'm gonna stop flex I don't wanna like catch feelings <laughs> During this time, the game was overseas with Snoop Dogg performing over there for the whole month of February. But a day later, the game got word of the freestyle and immediately took note of Jay-Z mentioning the word game quite a few times. Then just a couple days later, on February 10th, 2005, according to 50 Cent, the game called him and asked what to do in this situation. 50 Cent said, hold on, don't say anything back to Jay-Z, and let me figure it out. Apparently, though, the game did not do that, and that night, on stage in Amsterdam, he decided to diss not only Jay-Z, but the whole Rockefeller and Murder, Inc. I like telling people stuff like that. It made me feel good. I can't fucking say names. Oh, oh. Jay-Z, or Jigga Man, or none of that shit. I'm straight the fuck out of count, and I'm a nigga with a motherfucking attitude. Like, And of course, 50 Cent wasn't a fan of the game doing this without his approval because it then goes back on 50 Cent and he has to solve everything. And that's when 50 said he called Jay-Z and tried to fix the situation between him and game because even 50 knew at the time that Jay-Z could kill his career because of how new of an artist he was. Every every situation that, uh, that he's came, like he had a, a, a situation with Jay-Z. Mm. You know, that when he had issues with Jay, and I got a phone call from him. He was in Amsterdam when he called me back in the States, and I told him, I said, just sit tight. Let me see exactly what it's about. You know, I'll get in contact with Jay and see how it, yeah. you know, really what What's it is. Happening? And uh, before I could get back to him, he went on stage and told everybody to suck him off. Mm. You know what I mean? And that's not how, I'm not comfortable with that. That's not how I function yeah. with my crew. You know, they, yeah. they wait until I say make a move because... Ultimately, everyone looks like hmm. I'm responsible for their actions. After going on that tirade of dissing Jay-Z on stage, the game essentially backtracked everything. He started doing interviews after his appearance on stage 
overseas by calling in and talk to various radio hosts clearing up the situation with him and Jay-Z. On February 11, 2005, the game called into the Los Angeles radio station Power 106 and explained to DJ Felly Fell that he'd been getting a stream of pages and emails while on tour telling him members of The Rock were dissing him on New York and Philadelphia radio stations. The game also said he had mixed emotions about Jay-Z throwing insults his way. He said on the one hand, he was hurt because Jay is one of the artists he looks up to and even studied. Game said he was confused because he didn't think he did anything to warrant a beef on wax with Hove. He said respect goes out the window when you are continuously slapped in the face. The game also revealed that after doing that in Amsterdam and dissing Jay-Z, Dr. Dre called him personally to say he talked to Jay-Z and that Jay-Z insisted he was not dissing Game. So both 50 Cent and Dr. Dre tried to mend the situation between Game and Jay-Z, but ultimately it didn't work. On that same day of February 11th, he also appeared on DJ Ski's Sirius XM radio for an interview and clarified everything. As you already know, I guess Jay a couple nights ago went on Hot 97, had this freestyle called Summer. People said, you know, he was taking shots at you indirectly, but I guess, you know, Bleak and Young Guns and shit were up there too talking shit. And you fired back. We just played the audio of you live on stage saying, you know, Jay can suck my dick, Rockefeller can suck my dick. Yeah. So what's the deal with you and Jay, man? Break it down. Yeah, you know. Uh, I know Jay's work. I know, you know, I know the album. I study Jay Z along with all the rest of the hip hop legends. So when I hear music, I read between the lines. And even though, you know, he said there was a song about summertime, I, you know, I kind of heard my name on TV times, and, and I kind of felt offended. Like, you know, what I ever do? What I ever do to Jay? They thought I was talking about him on West Side Story with the uh, May Bags and and and, and the button up shirts. But I, I I came out on a documentary and I straightened up. I straightened that up. You know what I'm saying? But it's, you know, it's when, when, like, I keep hearing it, man, and people keep, like, talking shit about it. Jay is killing you, uh, Bleak. They all killing you, the young guns. They're killing you on the radio. So I, what I did at Amsterdam, I did that to cover my ass. I had a show in uh, London tonight, and I didn't put Jay name in my show. You know what I'm saying? I didn't do that because I kind of felt, you know, a little in the wrong for what I did last night. Now the audio from Amsterdam is, I'm pretty sure, circulating all over the U.S. right now. And if Jake gets it and he takes offense to it and he wants to come out and say, you know, and, and, and start this, you know, so-called beef or so-called war, then, you know, I'm going to use, I'm, I'm, I'm gonna use my creativity as a hip-hop artist and, and my best judgment to really pan out what it is. And if I think that, uh, if I think that, uh, you know, that, that, that he's trying to dismantle my character and my career, then uh, I will come out. I don't want to beef with Jay, but at the same time, I don't want to beef with nobody I got respect for, but at the same time, respect only goes so far, you know what I'm saying? As far as Memphis Bleak and the Young Guns, man, I'll bury those dudes, man. They not on my level, man, you know what I'm saying? I'm on a whole nother level. I ain't saying I'm on a whole level, but I'm, I'm damn sure not on Bleak and the Young Guns level, man. I squashed them, man. After this, the game was finishing up his tour overseas with Snoop Dogg, and during the first week of March 2005, he came back to the United States and immediately headed to New York to talk to radio stations about his issues with Jay-Z. At the time, the game thought he was doing something good by clearing up all the issues, but what he ended up doing was actually saying he has no problems with anybody, including the people that 50 didn't like and 50 Cent did not like him not listening to him about the Jay-Z situation and then going on air and talking about how he doesn't have any issues with anyone. And then this, of course, sparked the issues between 50 Cent and the game and the game's attention shifted towards 50 Cent and they ended up having their own beef. And if you haven't seen my documentary on that, check out 50 Cent versus the game, who really won, and you'll see all the details relating to that. With the game's attention being shifted to 50 Cent, and Jay-Z claiming he had retired from rap and instead was the president of Def Jam, the game focused all of his attention on 50 Cent for the next year and a half. And the crazy thing about this is the game's career was saved by 50 Cent and Jay-Z. Yes, both of them had a role in saving the game's career. He was nearly at one point dropped from Aftermath Records because Jimmy Iovine had cut the budget on a lot of artists. But Jay-Z at the time heard Hate It or Love It and said it was a hit, and 50 Cent at the time decided to bring him on to G-Unit Records because they needed a West Coast artist. So the only other two people that vouched for the game's career other than Dr. Dre, he actually ended up having issues with. 
at, at what point did you find out that Hove said, you know, like you were going to get cut after after from Aftermath if Hove hadn't said that Hater or Love It was going to be a hit? That's a real thing. Uh, they were cutting, they cut, uh, there was a chick named Brooklyn that was signed, uh-huh. there was Joe Beast. Um, there was a few artists that were amazing that it was just time to cut, cut those albums. Jimmy Iovine was like, cut this, cut this, cut that. And uh, 50, uh, as much as I hated them, you know, like, I don't know, uh, Eight months ago, right. you know what I'm saying? <laughs> Which uh, we more than cool now. Uh, 50 was like, what? Game? No, 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 no. Like, let me get game. Don't cut game. Wow. We're going to take game on tour. We need a member of, like, you know, G-Unit is from the mm-hmm. West Coast. We got Buck from the South. Me, Yayo, and Banks are from the East. Like, game would be perfect. Jimmy Iveen was like, all right. And, yeah, yeah. <laughs> I and love the impression. There, I guess so. Uh, Dre was always, like, in tune. But Dre has so much going on at that time. You know what I mean? He's right. working on Detox. 50 is bigger than life. M's working on stuff. Um, And so Dre was like, you know, he was there. He was like, same me. You know, it's bigger than me. Mm-hmm. And I was just like, all right, I didn't understand. But uh-huh. now I understand that the powers that be. Jimmy Iovine, the building, tax time was coming. Mm-hmm. It was right. time to, like, cut albums. And it wasn't personal. So uh, 50, you know, and Jay-Z being on a yacht with, uh, with Dre saying this is a smash, you know, like, During 2005, the game's focus was solely on 50 Cent and G-Unit. He released an insane amount of mixtapes going at them. But even during these mixtapes, he did mention Jay-Z, but more so in a respectful way. He would sometimes joke with Jay-Z, but he would also take shots a little bit at Memphis Bleak on certain tracks. As time went on in 2006, the game ended up gearing up to drop his second album, Doctor's Advocate. And on this album, he decided to take his aim back towards Jay-Z. And on the first single, which was released on July 24th, 2006, called One Blood, he decided to go at Jay-Z once again. He jokes about Jay-Z being 38 years old and very old to be still rapping. And as of the making of this video, the game is still rapping at 40 years old, and he admitted that he regretted writing these bars. You 38 and you still rapping, uh. I'm 26, nigga, so is the dub. I ain't got beef with 50, no beef with Jay. What's beef when you getting head in the sixth tray? Then the game released his second studio album, Doctor's Advocate, on November 14th, 2006. And on the single, Wouldn't Get Far with Kanye West, he decides to go at Jay-Z a little bit more. And this time, he actually plays games with his girlfriend at the time, Beyonce. And ain't nobody trying to take Beyonce from Jay, but I know his name Superhead back in the day. Now, we must remember at this time in 2006, Jay-Z was not rapping. He was retired, and he was the president of Def Jam Records. But, of course, Jay-Z always listens and heard what Game had to say about him on One Blood and Wouldn't Get Far. Even though Jay-Z said he was retired, he started making his comeback in that same year that the Game dropped his second album. He started releasing singles from his ninth studio album, Kingdom Come. Then, the following week after Game dropped his second album, Jay-Z dropped Kingdom Come on November 21st, 2006. And on the intro track, The Prelude, he decides to respond to the game, making fun of him for being 38 years old and still rapping. I used to think rapping at 38 was ill. Well, last year alone I grossed 38 mil. Of course, the game heard this, and in game fashion, he decided to respond on an onslaught of diss records. On February 8th, 2007, there was unreleased bonus tracks from the Doctor's Advocate album, and on one of the tracks titled My Bitch, he's not only dissing 50 Cent and Shook Knight, but he's also dissing Jay-Z. Bullshit, whoever knew she was raised in BK. Moved out the hood, changed the name to Jay. Y'all was introduced to her back in 96. She had a wavy haircut and some big ass lips. He also released a track called My Turn, in which he's referring to the Jay-Z beef and that he had to defend his career when it comes to 50 and Jay. Since I don't button up, now I'm beefing with Jay. And apologize second, you n****s is reckless. You're not gonna bait me to beef with a legend. Other than those tracks, nothing much was really said from The Game or Jay-Z in 2007. The Game released his You Know What It Is Volume 4 mixtape, Murder Game Chronicles on April 8th, 2007. And on this tape, he would mention Jay-Z here and there, such as taking the throne and paying homage to him. Then in 2008, things would flare up once again with the game and Jay-Z, but it would all be because of a fan and a story that he had to tell the world. Jay-Z was in Wimbledon 
watching a game. And while there, there was somebody that came up to Jay-Z by the name of JP. He was from Los Angeles, and he told this story. He said, I'm currently on vacation in London right now and got the chance to go to Wimbledon. Out of the corner of my eye, I caught Jay-Z cheering in the stands. During a break, all of the older Brits and other Europeans, they're taking pictures with them and getting autographs. I was heated because I was an actual fan and I was trying to get into his section so I could play him my ringtone, which was Ho's verse on Mr. Carter. So he could give me free tickets to a sold out concert or at least smoke me out. Haha. Ha. Unfortunately, security wouldn't let me into his area and the other tennis match was about to start. So without thinking, while the match was going on, I stand up and scream, it's the rock. Security immediately ran over to me and all of the rich Europeans looked at me like I had a bomb on me. Hove started cracking up and threw up the rock while security was running towards me. Later on, I saw that he was leaving early, so I ran down the stairs to see if I could shake his hand or take a picture. He was already swarmed by people, and he and his people were on the move. I jumped in front of him and shook his hand, and I couldn't think of anything to say. All my dumbass could think of in my Dodger fitted was, when are you going to go at the game? And he just laughed and said, we ain't f***ing with him. We're going to let him commit suicide. Definitely one of the highlights of my first trip outside of Cali. And this story spread like wildfire, so much so that the game caught wind of it. And while promoting his third studio album, LAX, he would clown Jay-Z in every single interview, responding to his comments about committing suicide. And it made sense that Jay-Z directed those suicide comments at the game because during an interview with The Source magazine in 2008, the game revealed that he did want to commit suicide. Can you tell us about that limb from limb? Comment about Jay-Z. Explain that a little bit. Oh, uh, I could demonstrate it. Go ahead. Go ahead. No, 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 man. Jay says some, he probably fly at this little tennis match, man. And, uh, you know, I just painted the picture of what he probably looked like at the tennis match. He's at Wimbledon. I can't spell Wimbledon. You know what I'm saying? I don't know where, I don't know where that's at. You know what I'm saying? I don't know if, no, you ever been to Wimbledon? Nah, nah. Nobody in this right? building. Yeah, not, so we don't know about no Wimbledon, you know what I'm saying? But uh, I know Jay-Z was there with oh, his, his flies, open toe sandals on. Wow. You know what I'm saying? Couple, couple coins popping out the side of the Louis V. Sanders, man. But, uh, man, uh, I think somebody, I'm big in Europe, so somebody uh, out the crowd yelled out, when you gonna go a game or something, and I kind of offended him, got up under his skin, man. So he said, you know, we ain't, we ain't with, uh, you know, with the boy game, we gonna wait for him to commit suicide. So that's all I needed, man. You know what I'm saying? What? It was Jay to cross yeah. that line, but anytime you wanna do it, old man, you know what I'm saying? It's all good, man. We can do it, man. Then he dropped his album on August 26th, 2008, and on the album, there were a few references to Jay-Z, but nothing really that was dissing him. Then as we get into 2009, things between the game and Jay-Z start to heat up once again. And this is because Jay-Z decides to send more subliminal shots at the game. So on July 3rd, 2009, Jay-Z was on tour and every single time at every single stop, he would freestyle the Blueprint 3 intro. And this was the first time he did it on July 3rd at the Palms Hotel in Las Vegas. And when spitting this freestyle, he sent shots at Dame Dash, Jim Jones, and the game. This is the intro of Blueprint 3. I ain't talking about Gossip, I ain't talking about Game, I ain't talking about Jimmy, I ain't talking about Dan. I'm talking about real shit. The game caught wind of this, and just two days later, while out in France, on July 5th, he decided to yell out, fuck Jay-Z, while performing on stage. I don't care what it is say. This is how I'm coming out today. Jay-Z. Yeah. And if it's like that, I'm pretty sure you can find an exit somewhere. This is Black Wall Street Party. Who's saying, fuck Jay-Z? Yeah. Jay-Z. Yeah. Jay-Z. Yeah. Jay-Z. Jay-Z. Speaking of dreams, I said, speaking of dreams, 
gave your name. I mean, what kind of names are shining? And since Jay-Z was performing the Blueprint 3 intro at every tour stop he was doing, the game decided to finally respond on a diss track on July 11th, 2009. He dropped the response diss track, I'm so wavy. From where I'm about to go is usually a no-no, but I'm loco, got the camel in the choco, trying to sell me, I'm not from NYC, you can't even have a child by your destiny, uh, and I ain't mean to take a shot at B, I blacked out like you did free, cause I'm so wavy, too hardcore to be a Jay-Z, I see you download my swag, camel face, blueprint three, gonna sell more cigarettes than it do records, now I know why the taxes went up on tobacco, motherfucker. And last but not least, peace to M.I.A. Cause the rock bout to be M.I.A. No one on the corner got a swagger like you. Cause no one on the corner is 42. After this, Jay-Z was still doing tours and then he went overseas to the UK and did an interview with Tim Westwood on July 21st, 2009. And Tim Westwood asked Jay-Z about the game and Jay-Z simply responded that he's a groupie. Okay, now... The game. Now, I like the game. The game is uh changing all the time, and you know I've been dominating the game okay, forever. Okay, okay, you know? I respect that. But let's go into the game, the artist. Oh. Now you, now in my humble opinion, you brought that onto yourself in a way that you mentioned his name on the freestyle in the concert. Okay, now tell me exactly what I said. Okay, uh, yo, I might. My... No, no, no. Tell me exactly what I said. Well. You said you mentioned his name, Jim Jones's name, Dame Dash's name. And I said, I'm not talking about exactly. this, this. I'm not talking. Is that a diss? Like if I say, I'm, I'm not exactly. talking about you. Oh, you hurt my feelings. Oh my <laughs> exactly. God. Tell groupie, tell groupie to get over it. <laughs> it's like they wanted you yeah, tell to diss him. They wanted you. They wanted, all of them wanted the diss. Well. Oh, good. If that's a diss, then where that? So you, you think sensitive hot house flowers? Yeah, you know, tell groupie to get over it. <laughs> <laughs> What's crazy is the game was in UK as well in London. And while he was performing on stage the following day on July 22nd, 2009, he brought out a Jay-Z fan on stage, multiple fans actually, and made fun of them. Fuck 
while the game was touring, every time he would perform, he would play the Jay-Z Death of Autotune instrumental and freestyle over it. And on July 23rd, he added on multiple lines going at Jay-Z. Unfortunately, this track never officially was released. It was just freestyles during the concerts. Death for the autotune shit. Somebody tell Hov, get off them young with me, I will put the rock on his back, R.I.P. to the cat that killed Roger and Zap C. But I be talking about game, better keep it about Jimmy, don't be speaking about Dame, cause speaking of Dame, gave your name, I mean, speaking of Dame, gave your name, I said, what type of name is Sean and Tata? I know a bitch named Sean used to rub on the top ties. J. Otis, the flow is cop cop, the game's so hot, somebody give me some water. J.C. J.C. Old ass, uh, yeah, old ass chicken. Amsterdam, yeah, let's get ready to rock out. Then a few days later, on July 29th, 2009, Jay Z did an interview with Big Boy's Neighborhood, and Big Boy asked Jay Z about the game and what exactly happened and where their issues started. Jay Z simply responds by saying. Game is just on tour looking for attention and that there are no real issues behind it. The game. Game is all over the world right now. In many, you know, venues saying FJZ, old brother, so on and so forth. Where did this game getting on Jay-Z, where did that generate from? And where does this go to from, from Jay-Z's standpoint? Uh, I think he's been posturing for this type of thing, you know, for a while, and I guess he just took the fact that I said I'm not talking about, which is not a diss at all, but, and just, you know, uh, figured, you know, that was his opportunity. So, you know, he's, he's having, uh, he's going on tour, and he's promoting, I guess, buzz or marketing or what, however people feel that they need attention these days. So it's, there's no real problem behind it. There's no real challenge behind it. Like with the Nas thing, that was a real thing simmering. It wasn't done for any marketing or anything like that. So, you know, I typically let those type of things slide, but, you know, I could wake up tomorrow and just really, you know, go right in. While on the promo run for his new album, Blueprint 3, Jay-Z graced the cover of XXL Magazine for the October 2009 issue. And in the issue, they asked him about the game. This is what XXL asked. You're hilarious right now, but speaking of Jim Jones, he and cats like the game stay throwing shots at you, referring to you as old and washed up, but you always thrived off that type of competition. So currently, in the most comfortable position of your career, how competitive are you? Jay-Z responded saying, not really that competitive because the competition isn't based on real competition. I mean, game, I'm his fucking idol. If you ask him and he's been truthfully honest with you, it's just based on his insecurities and for the most part, pretension. That type of competition doesn't do anything for me. It's almost like someone trying to set you up and everyone knows they're trying to set you up. It's just dumb. It's not in the spirit of competition because he's not competition for me. He's not, not then, not now. I can't say not ever. He'd have to improve considerably. Competition for me is Nas Eminem. Like Jim Jones, that's ridiculous to me. So how do I respond to that? I can't win. If I win, they'll be like, see, now chill. You're a f***ing bully. And if he manages to throw a haymaker from the West Coast, then it's like, oh, it's not even fun. Like before, I did it because I would diss anybody. Now, who has the time to do this shit every day? But before, when I was running after the little fat guy from Mesa's camp, I was doing anybody. Anybody said anything. If I thought you said something when I was running in the streets, I wanted all that type of activity. Nobody wanted nothing. Now everybody's a tough guy. After this, nothing really more was said between the game and Jay-Z. Jay-Z started focusing on his upcoming album, Blueprint 3, and then started focusing on issues between him and 50 Cent. I'm also working on a video titled... 50 Cent vs. Jay-Z, What Really Happened. So subscribe, be on the lookout for that. That's coming after this. Then on November 24th, 2009, The Game did an interview with Complex Magazine, and they asked him about what he thought about 50 Cent going at Jay-Z, and even talked about his own issues with Jay-Z. Complex said to The Game, 50's been baiting Jay-Z recently. As someone who's had issues with both of them, how do you feel about him going after Jay? Game responded saying, oh yeah, I already did that Jay-Z thing. 50's just doing what I'm doing. Nobody went at Jay, I went at Jay. Now everybody wants to get at Jay. 
Not saying anything about Beanie Siegel. That's personal, and I stay out of that. He's just a man, and he's got all the right in the world. But I feel like I did something that people have been wanting to do. But everybody is scared because Jay-Z is so lyrically inclined to cut your throat and your career in half that nobody wanted to do it. But me, I just don't give a fuck sometimes. Complex then says, what do you think that the result of that battle would be? Game responds and says, Jay-Z will f 50 up in a battle. It would be so fast and over with. 50 is funny, but Jay-Z is witty. Jay-Z is not to be toyed with. If he fucking responds, if he feels like you're really pissing him off and he responds, he's going to fuck you up. He would fuck me up. I'm just glad he didn't fucking respond so I didn't have to dig in my fucking bag and try to fuck him up. I definitely think that Jay-Z didn't come at me like he came at any other rappers because I feel like I definitely would have been more disrespectful. And once you start a beef with me, you better be ready to get the whole motherfucking 12 rounds because I will try to chew your fucking ear off like Mike Tyson. I'll do it, and I think he knew that I'm disrespectful. So Jay, he did the right thing and just kind of let it die down, and I let it die down. It wasn't anything really. It was fucking fun, and I really admire Jay's career. I just really don't care too much for the man himself. As the years went on, the issues between Game and Jay-Z seemingly died down, but on July 22nd, 2011, the game dropped a track titled Uncle Otis, which is a play on Jay and Kanye's Otis track, which is off the Watch the Throne album. And Game said he only dropped this track to make fun of Jay-Z and diss him a little bit to essentially promote his album, which he had dropping at the time, the Red Album. Uh, here's a don't shot to this nigga named Otis. Niggas think they the coldest, but nigga, you just the oldest. Niggas be chasing the youth, but it's gone. Uncle Otis. Uncle Otis, he's a Uncle, good dude, man. Uncle Otis, now you, you did this song, of course, it's a play off of the Otis, the Jay Z, <clears throat> Kanye record. Yeah. Now you, you took a couple stabs at Jay. Two to be exact. Two to yeah, be that exact. is a couple. But you, you promised Pharrell that you would leave Jay alone. Yeah, you man. You told I did. Pharrell, you, when y'all were recording, you said, I'm going to leave Jay alone, and you changed your mind. Yeah. Why? It was more Pharrell, you know, influence. He told me I should leave Jay alone, and I agreed. Okay. And then I changed my mind. Yeah, <laughs> but why, it's cool. Why, why, why take a stab at Jay this time? You know, I thought about it when I was in the studio. I was like, I, you know, I promised Pharrell I wasn't going to do it, but it, it, Uncle Otis just wasn't right without Jay, man. Right. And, uh, it, was, it just didn't make sense because mm -hmm. it wasn't going, you take the Jay shout out, and then what would we be talking about? Cre creatine, I mean, Cre 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 yeah, yeah, yeah. and we wouldn't have been talking about nobody. Right. It wouldn't. Uh, you wouldn't be talking to me now about it. Right, all right. So the game in that same year did an interview and talked about Jay-Z and how he's always wanted to battle with him and how Jay-Z is just scared to do so and how hip-hop is just really complicated. Following this, nothing more from the game was really said about Jay-Z in terms of anything disrespectful. Game, obviously, on his albums and mixtapes would reference Jay-Z almost on every single project, but it was really never in a disrespectful way. Game even talked about surviving the beef with Jay-Z in 2015 and why he actually started beefing with Jay-Z and how he just wanted to be a part of hip-hop and he was happy the fact that Jay-Z responded and even noticed him. I'm probably one of the only cats that ever like went at, you know, straight at Jay-Z's neck and still had a career after, um, which is risky. I remember even fighting, having a real like argument with the mother of my children because she was a Jay-Z fan and she was just like, you don't know what you're doing. He's going to come back and he's going to and we're not going to be able to survive. And, but um, I did it anyway. And um, Jay never responded. Um, number one, he is smart, and I think that he knows that I'm reckless, and there's nothing that I can't say, but he has to be filtered because he's more of a businessman, and he's a little bit older, and he's doing all these business deals, so he can't really go as reckless as I can. But once I go, I'm gone. I know that you know he listens, and I know that he respects me because he responds sometimes. Like on um, One Blood, when I hit him with um, um, uh, You 38 and You Still Rapping, uh, he came with, um, you know, on Kingdom Come, I think it was, he came with, um, I used to think rapping at 38 was ill to last, to last year I grossed about 38 mil. So he listens, he responds sometimes, and I, that's cool in its own right. So Fast forward to 2022. And things between the game and Jay-Z flared up once again when Dr. Dre performed at the NFL Super Bowl halftime show on February 13th. When they performed, Dr. Dre brought out everyone except the game. So the game went on Drink Champs and talked about why he wasn't on the Super Bowl show. And he was very disappointed that Dr. Dre didn't reach out to him. Speculation, though, came that Jay-Z had a part in in the game not being in the Super Bowl show because of the issues they had in the past. 
Now, the reason why Jay-Z had a part in this whole Dr. Dre Super Bowl show was because back on August 13th, 2019, Jay-Z announced that his Rock Nation company would be entering partnership with the NFL. And Jay-Z would basically be the one that would bring on new acts for the Super Bowl show and have a more diverse show. And the first thing that he suggested was have Dr. Dre perform at the Super Bowl show. And that's exactly what happened. So a lot of people speculated that Jay-Z had the behind the scenes control on who could perform. Basically, you got to look at the Super Bowl, right? Mm. It was a Jay-Z mm. rock, I mean, live nation, rock nation, one of the nations. You know right. what I'm saying? It's just, it wasn't a nation of Islam, but it right. was one of the nations. Right. <laughs> right. 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 But they put it together, right? Whole put it together. And so... He picked the artist that he thought was fit for the Super Bowl that he was in charge of putting together, right? Mm -hmm. um, and, and that's Hov, you know what I'm saying? One of the mm -hmm. greatest that ever did it. And look mm -hmm. at what he do for the coaching. He always pushing, you know, pushing us on them. Right. And and then you got to think about the stage. Mm -hmm. The stage was the Super Bowl. Mm -hmm. And on, like, you know what I'm saying? A nigga over here smoking right. that smoke. Right, exactly. Like, we don't, we don't get up there right. as it is, mm -hmm. you know what I'm saying? And this theory was amplified when the game's manager, WAC100, went on Clubhouse and said the game told Jay-Z to suck his d after the Super Bowl show because he wasn't included. However, on February 20th, 2002, the game spoke out and said he did not say that about Jay-Z and that WAC100 does not speak for the game. He said on Instagram, don't nobody speak for the game except the game. I ain't had no conversation with nobody regarding Jay-Z and the Super Bowl he put together. I don't feel no way about not being included. It was a great show featuring iconic artists. It was a win for the culture. He said, I control my own narrative. Do not be fooled by the internet, blogs, podcasts, or anyone speaking on my name. That is not me. My life and new album are both amazing. I'm in a great space creatively and artistically. I'm in Miami to help Ye finish Donda 2 and support my friend in one of the most pivotal times of his life slash career leave me in my name out of any negative conversations unless I have given you the real reason to include me Hove continues to break down doors for the culture and I am full support of anything and anyone who is on the help side of urban greatness black future month Numenati. then a couple months later on April 17th 2022 Snoop Dogg appeared on the Drink Champs podcast and Noriega revealed on Drink Champs that he asked Jay-Z if he actually blocked the game from performing at the Super Bowl. And Jay-Z simply said he had no control and didn't tell Dr. Dre anything. He's the one that ran the entire event. So I hit the big homie and then Jay-Z comes see me. He actually comes see me. He comes and I ask him. I say, yo, I just had the homie game on. And I need to, I need, I need to, I need to know from me to you, was game excluded? Do you know what the big homie told me? What? The nigga said, I can't tell Dre nothing. Mm. Mm. Then on July 5th, 2022, the game revealed that Jay Z cleared seven samples for his new album. He posted a photo of Jay Z on Instagram and said, Shout out to S. Dot for clearing all seven samples on Drillmatic. Three more sample clearances. An album on the year belongs to me and Hit Boy. So based off of that, it would seem like Jay Z and the game have no issues with each other officially. As of the making of this video, this is the last thing that's happened between the game and Jay Z, and we don't know what's going to happen in the future. But we'll just have to wait and see. And maybe this is finally one step closer to the game's dream of having Jay Z on one of his albums. They've never collabed together officially, so that would be something crazy to witness and that's it for the game versus jay-z what really happened let me know what you guys think in the comments below would you like to see a game and jay-z collaboration be on the lookout for 50 cent versus jay-z what really happened that's coming as well that's it for today's video if you guys want to support this channel further you can do so at patreon.com 
forward slash diverse mentality. For just $3 a month, you can get my videos uncut and raw the way I intended them to be, but couldn't because of YouTube. Plus, you also get access to our Discord community, where we have a great community talking about hip hop and various other things. It's very dope. So only $3 a month, I'd really appreciate the support. Also follow us on social media at QuakeGW and at Diverse Mentality. Thank you so much for the support, and I'll see you guys in the next one. Peace.